Hello everyone, this is going to be the part two of the Smart Copilot configuration tutorial. Today I'm talking specifically about commands and um, how to program them. Um, for this tutorial I'm using a L1011 that uh, no longer exists on the X-Plane org store. Uh, it was developed by uh, somebody by the name of Michael. I can't remember the last name. But uh, this plane uses a lot of the basic um, basic functionalities. There's not really any custom commands, but uh, you'll basically get the uh, simple idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm using the uh, default X-Plane flight management computer here and this is going to uh, just be used as a reference um, we already have all this defined in very many uh, configuration files so if I really wanted to uh, program this into any specific airplane that has it I could just copy from someone's configuration and then uh, that saves me the trouble of finding each individual button or uh, yeah or slider whatever you would want to define it so what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with this uh, uh, by the way this is uh, what's called uh, click spots I believe uh, it basically shows you all the places where you can click even though there's a few other spots here that you can typically they uh, will have some information too if you hover over them like spoilers flaps down I think this is nope that one doesn't do it that one doesn't do it well that one does auto brakes so in some cases um, doing this will help you define uh, the specific said value yeah, even the gear it doesn't tell me about the gear. With that said, you can use that sort of to your advantage if you're trying to find a, a, a specific command or maybe a data ref. Um, I know the commands th um, and the, the data refs that are in the Carinado planes, they have the little tool tips or um, little click spots and then if you hover over there they'll actually tell you the data ref or the command uh, for that specific animation and or button so on and so forth but anywho we're using this as the simple example I'm gonna line select the top left here and then I'm going to press this middle area which I think is supposed to oh yeah there it is which brings up the flight management computer I wanna press just a bunch of buttons here alright so we have some commands so when I press the uh, the screen here it brings up the two-dimensional panel and as you can see it's highlighting this specific command so in this case this one says CDU central display pop-up basically is what that means so if I wanted to uh, make it so anybody that was flying this plane with me uh, was to click on that I could make it so that this window would pop up uh, for both players or both clients and then both clients would be able to actually program with this two-dimensional panel at the same time or vice versa so I'm just gonna say I want that command and again these these are just basic commands for this flight management computer it, it can start getting into some more complex stuff um, and at that point I can't guarantee that any of them for that matter are going to even function I have run into probably a dozen maybe maybe definitely more than a dozen I would say probably a hundred commands throughout the planes that I've actually made configuration configurations for and 
some of those do they dis they don't work so and there's nothing I can do about it because it's just the way that the specific command is been has been programmed there's uh, specific commands that uh, smart copilot likes and there's also commands that smart copilot doesn't like so with that said uh, it's, it's going to be obviously your responsibility if you're testing to find out whether or not those function if they're even worth the time to program uh, for example I mean this doesn't have to even show up it can only uh, in most cases a lot of these I make uh, they're just the 3d model so basically this was this specific pop-up is going to be client driven for each um, so you will have your own two-dimensional pop-up and the other client will have its own pop-up rather than having one that pops up for both of you and uh, I'm not sure I think there's a data ref for this possibly you might even be able to sync up the movement of it which is it's pretty ridiculous you don't need to uh, you don't need to do that but uh, we have the CDU so say we did want to take this pop-up and we're gonna add it to our configuration if you're taking commands any specific commands it needs to be under the commands section and as you can see here on the right of the screen I've already made a small example uh, along with the line selects there as you can see and here we have the CDU pop-up so if I was to save this uh, and create it as a configuration file the moment that anybody clicked that that would pop up um, now let's move on to something that's a little not uh, typical um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's just say this reset button we don't know what this button actually is but as we can see we can hover right over it and it tells us what it is and now that I've pressed it it's giving me the said command for that light um, sorry for that that switch which it's basically the uh, enunciator uh, it's basically a test switch as you can see when I press this the fire lights in the left hand corner there for each engine will light up and actually the battery is off so if I turn on the avionics up here uh, for some reason this plane's doing some weird stuff but uh, you can see here the gear the gear light the in transit light should I say uh, no longer illuminates so it's just to test lights but uh, let's say there's no data ref for this or there is a data ref in some cases I would say you want to use a data ref and a command but that's only in some specific situations if you start seeing glitches then you need to remove one or the other because they end up fighting each other some commands and data refs work together specifically I'm trying to think of one here uh, it would it'd be like uh, an altimeter with like a push button so that would that push button needs to be command driven otherwise uh, the data ref basically just doesn't get sent so it ha that has to be yeah command driven so let's see if we just wanted to add this enunciator in here we could do that as well I already have a tab called uh, or a section here called autopilot uh, even though that's not really part of the autopilot I can put I can put these anywhere that I want them to be they don't have to be anywhere specific so now that we have that in there I could save this I could send it to my friend, go up to my smart copilot uh, menu here, connect via sky server and or direct connection, whichever you choose. 
I would be master or slave. And then uh, basically when I connect, if I press this button, and actually you can see this button actually animates. It moves in and out. Uh, so when anybody press that, whether it be me the master or, or the slave, that button will function. Now let's see if there's a, uh, a data ref on this as well, which there probably will be. Yeah, it looks possible. But as you can see, watch what happens when I press this. Do you see what I am seeing? So this is uh, where some commands come in handy. I could copy each one of these data refs and create line after line after line after line. However, it's much simpler if I just program this specific command. And as you can see, every one of these gets triggered when I go and press this. Some way, shape, or form. So to make things easier, obviously I can see there's a command for it. It's sim-based. So again, most of the sim-based commands, they do work. Some of the non-sim-based commands, they don't do anything at all. So keep that in mind. But uh, the way I'm doing it here is basically saving me the trouble of doing everything you just saw there. Yeah, I mean, who wants to afterburner? was triggering the afterburner to annunciator okay that's interesting this this plane doesn't have any afterburner but I think this annunciator or this command is just specifically um, it's making all these annunciators basically trip anything that says annunciator it basically is tied to it and they just did that to make it simple so they didn't have to actually take each one of these and then tie it um, actually, they they did. Sorry, they did. But uh, for me, um, if I, as long as I do the command, I don't have to do all these data refs. It, it's just it's not uh, it's sorry time consuming. It's not time effective. Not very effective at all. Yeah, there's I mean there's some in here that uh, high rotor. Yeah. Okay. I I, I don't know if that's there's probably a couple in here. Prop a beta. Y yeah, yeah. So there's just, there's some random ones in here that sh that that shouldn't even be tied to this specific command. But this is the basics for commands, and it's pretty simple. It's no different than finding a specific data ref. It just takes a lot less time than finding each data ref in most cases.